That was a good double grande soy caramel macchiato. The beginning of every adventure ride has to start with a coffee shop. It's like it's a law or something. It is. It's man. all part of the experience. And dude, it's a killer experience. I love riding adventure bikes. They've got tons of power. They're super capable. They got long travel suspension. They got every kind of ride mode you'd ever want. Cruise control, and they're comfortable. There's nothing bad about them, I think. Man, you're right. They really are the high performance SUV of motorcycling. But at the same time, they're kind of big. They're pretty heavy. And if you don't have a lot of experience riding, they're pretty intimidating to ride. Plus they take up way too much room in your garage and they can kind of look ridiculous sometimes. They do, sometimes they look like a spaceship, but I think Triumph's new motorcycle, the Scrambler 1200 XE and XE are gonna address a lot of those issues for people. It's got all the stuff that you would expect to find on an adventure bike. You know, the ride modes, long travel suspension, all the technology, but it's styled like a scrambler with a little bit lower seat height. It's kind of more accessible. Yeah, I want to ride those things. I got good news, dude. We've got an invite to go to Portugal to ride both the XC and XE model. So we got to get home, pack our bags, because we are going to Europe. Heck yeah, we like to ditch this high biz gear at home. Yep, let's do it. Triumph has chosen Faro, Portugal and the surrounding hills and beaches to showcase its all-new Scrambler 1200 models. After a quick shower and shave, we were tossed into a presentation room to find out all the details on the bikes and enjoy a few drinks. Some of us had more than others. The Scrambler 1200 XC might be considered the base model, but it's anything but basic. Both it and the more off-road ready XE model are powered by a 1200cc Bonneville high power engine, the very same one that's used in the Thruxton. A 43mm Showa front fork and Olin's rear shocks give 200mm or 7.9 inches of travel at both ends. A 33.1 inch seat height is lower and ground clearance is less than the XE, but this scrambler is decidedly more street focused. Scrambler 1200XZ, on the other hand, is the off-roader's delight. Taller bar risers and bars, longer suspension, more aggressive tires, and more ground clearance are all aimed at conquering miles off the beaten path. The next morning, we got to put them to the test, and test them we did, for two days. Not only at a closed course testing facility, but also out on the rougher roads in the mountains above Faro. We rode in the sunshine and in the pouring rain and then in the sunshine again, followed by more rain. At the end, we had a great time with both Charlie and Echo, but we still needed more. Could they handle the rigors of a place where the terrain gets really tough and where the adventure really begins? We decided to find out. Here we are, Ensenada, Baja California, Mexico. Justin, we're in the mecca of off-road racing right here. The Baja 1000 happens here, the Baja 500 happens here. That's right, and we're gonna do our own version of the 500. Nice. So we're gonna ride 500 miles, and we're gonna do it on 500 bucks. 500 bucks each, we're living lavish. Yeah. No, 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 no. 500 bucks total, for both of us. How are we supposed to go to Hong Kong tonight? You're gonna have to eat a couple less tacos. <sighs> I think I can live with that, maybe. Okay, cool. Well, we already started in Tijuana 70 miles ago. We got 430 miles more to go. Streets that way, the dirt's that way. And we're on these awesome Triumph Scrambler XEs built for the El Diablo Lake bed where we're gonna rip them. That's right. We're all done with riding the XE, so let's get out there, do some wheelies, cut some skids, have some fun. Let's go. All right. Although the dirt wasn't far, we still had to make our way across the port city of Ensenada. This meant dealing with crazy traffic and countless stop signs. But just 15 minutes later, we reached the edge of town. The roads opened up, traffic subsided, and the air was clean. El Diablo was close. Well, Dawes, man, I mean, we're getting to ride this Triumph Scrambler XE off-road again, man. This thing does it everywhere. It handled great in Portugal, and now it's eating up Baja, California, on our way to the dry lake bed. So this dry lake bed is on, you know, some of the Baja courses. So these guys are doing like over 100 miles an hour on this dry lake bed. No on way. Bikes. 
and like 120 in the trucks. Jeez, I saw triple digits in six gear today on the road. Maybe we can try it. Uh, I don't know if I want to go that gnarly, but I might I might try for the high 90s, but that's about <laughs> as fast as I want to go. Why don't we click her into sixth gear and find out then, buddy? All right, let's go. <laughs> Dude, what are you doing in the silt, man? That's the stuff that kills you on a, in a race. I'm trying to live the full Baja 500 experience, buddy. Yeah, well, a lot of Baja 500 experiences is not finishing the race. <laughs> Let's give her the beans, man. Let's go. Wow, that was about 95 miles an hour, dude. No way, dude. I saw 88. Nice job, man. Seven up on me. All right, Dawes, you want to do the famous wheelie test? Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Yeah, he. Somehow you always out wheelie me. Every freaking time. Code I put in the Triumph motorcycle. I yeah, you must have that. You must have the cheat code. I have the cheat code, buddy. Really cheat code. He must have really had a cheat code in his Triumph as he crisscrossed the dry lake bed on the rear tire in every direction. I decided to let him rock that stunner lifestyle while I found more fun cranking some turns on a dirt surface that is amazingly consistent. High speed drifts were what I was looking forward to at El Diablo, and it didn't disappoint. Eventually, even he joined in. Well, I think the Triumph passes the, the hooligan test out here on the lake bed. I think it does. With the hooligan and wheelie test complete, it was time to head north and west. The sun was still high, but wouldn't be for long, and we had some ground to cover to find food and lodging. Back on the road, we had to make one more important stop before nightfall. Some of the finest Mexican gas pumped straight from the barrel. Three milk jugs and $25 each, and we had what we needed to get to Mike Sky Ranch for some much needed carne, frioles, and rest. So Dawes, did El Diablo live up to its name? It did, it was really fun. I had a great time sliding around that, that Triumph on that dry lake bed, super fun. To me, it kind of felt like riding a 450 dirt bike, only these things are made in England. Kinda, I mean, big, heavy 450 dirt bikes, but the ergonomics are pretty close. Yeah, I agree, man. So we ran out of gas, we ran out of donuts, we ran out of food, we got lost a couple times, made it to Mike Sky Ranch still. How much money do we have left? Well, we spent, after all that yesterday, 232 bucks. That means we have 268 left, which is uh, plenty of cash for what we're doing. Well, what are we doing? So we're gonna head from here, down to Valley Trinidad, and across to the coast to a place called Coyote Cows. It's a racer's hostel, and the best part, it's cheap. 25 bucks a night. Ooh, plenty of money to spend on other stuff. Wahid's other stuff. All right, Dawson, let's hit the road. All right, yeah, we got lots of miles, let's do it. As the sun warmed the mountains above Mike's, we geared up. We left our secure poolside parking to head west across the mountains toward the ocean in search of cool breezes and Pacific views. But not before I gave Dawes a much needed shower. Then we found ourselves back on the Baja race course, bouncing through whoops, hoping the workout wouldn't last too long. Finally, we found some smoother dirt and crossed paths with some other Baja adventurers on much smaller bikes. There's nothing like Baja. The expanses between stops are beautiful and desolate. You need fuel to experience it. 
This time though, it wasn't from a milk jug. We're fueling up the bike and my body. I'm gonna go log some more miles here on the way to the sand at the beach. Long desert miles had us working hard and burning serious calories. The beach was calling, but first we had to stop for some tacos. Good choice on the tacos in here, Goss. That place is bomb. After one of the best meals available in San Vicente, we headed over the last mountain pass standing between us and the Pacific. That I smell. Uh, your armpits? No, it's not my armpits. It's the salty air of the ocean. I was gonna tell you it's gonna be about 20 more miles, but I don't think you could take it. No, no, I see it right in front of me. I smell it and I see it. There it is, man. Look at that view. How cool is it that we can actually ride these things down onto the coast? From the desert, through the mountains, to the coast. Dude, let's go check it out. The beach. Gnarly. We're so close to it, we could ride our motorcycles right into it. Yeah, but we actually need to ride them 20 miles north to Coyote Cows. You don't think it'd be fun to test the jet ski merits of this scrambler? Or rust testing. <laughs> Try to keep it out of the water as much as possible. But along the way, I see a few beaches, so we should try to get out on some of those. We should definitely take advantage of all that Mexico has to offer as good American citizens. I agree, so let's go do it. It wasn't hard to find a way onto the beach. Ripping the desolate beach is a time-honored tradition in Baja. We on the beach, dog. Dig a hole, dig some holes. Kind of soft. Whoa, where you at, Heen? Come on, buddy. Strap limiter, buddy. Third gear, baby. We are going the wrong way to get the coyote cows, though. We're heading south right now. We should be going north. Especially considering we're probably low on gas. Yeah, we should probably flip it. You were. I don't know how you're pulling off the corner so good compared to me. Because I got a lot of pounds to get some traction. You're skinny, I'm heavy. There we go, second gear. Come on, Heath, come on. End of the road. Let's head for Kai to Cows. All right, let's get out of here and drink some Margies. And we're out. Howdy cows. Good job, buddy. Tight, man. 391 miles down. How much dough do we spend? Not much today. I think we still got about 200 bucks left. So enough to get some Thai massage and margies. Yeah. There's lots of tequila here. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's get a shower, get some food, call it a day. Do it again tomorrow. Yep. All right. Triumph wanted their bikes back, and we needed to show our faces again in the office. But that didn't mean we were rushing back to the border. We'd take the scenic way home. Right outside of Cal's, and on the Baja 1000 course, we came across trophy truck driver BJ Baldwin's number one fan. You might have your favorite rider's merch, but you're not a super fan until you paint your house. The dirt roads along the Pacific are some of the most scenic that Baja has to offer. We even caught the tides just right to see a few active flow holes. Then, Heed finally got his shot. 
couldn't leave Baja without one more taco lunch, and after stuffing our faces, we finally made the push back towards the highway. People of Baja welcome motoheads with open arms. The riding is diverse, and the food and lodging is inexpensive. All I need in life is some tacos and this time motorcycle, and I'm dialed. Yep. And a bunch of petrol, too, obviously. Every motorcycle adventure needs to experience Baja at least once in their life. It's wild, it's free, and once you ride Baja, you'll want to do it over and over again. All right, Heath, that's it. We're done. That's the end of the dirt. It's street all the way to Tijuana. I'm kind of bummed that we're back on pavement, but we had a great time riding off-road. These scramblers really held their own. We saw some cool stuff, ate some good food, run on the beach. It was a good time. It was a good time. Uh, we've already done like 400 and something miles, 100 miles back. We're gonna break that 500 mile goal, and we still got cash in our pocket, 70 bucks or so. We can still get into some trouble with 70 bucks. We could, but I got an idea. So let's uh, head down to Rosarito Beach and check it out. Nice poncho, Heed. This ain't a poncho, it's an orango, I'll have you know. Well, I know for sure this is called a sombrero. You're rocking it well. I am. I don't know how it's going to be on the freeway on the way home, but we'll find out. That's it, man. 500 miles, 500 bucks. We just spent the last of it on these two bad boys right here. Now we just got to get over the border. It was one hell of a ride. We covered a lot of miles, saw a lot of cool stuff, and ate some great food. Good. And with that, that's the conclusion of this episode of On Two Wheels. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next time. Adios. Let's that start was over. a good warm up. That was a good warm up. Good warm up. Good warm up. Good warm up. Good up. All right. 500 bucks, we're going to blow it out of your ass. All right. Well, we're going to hit the road. Are they done? Okay, here we go. Yep. <laughs> you guys delayed our poop time last night. <laughs> Our time to take feces. You can't say feces on, on YouTube. You can't? No, hold on. Can you say poop? <laughs> I'm embellishing, like, I'm an actor, man. I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hi, Mark. Crystal Geyser is my personal sponsor. <laughs> Pay me millions of dollars a year. Not so scripted, Heath. <laughs> the Baja 1000s here, the Baja. We started again, sorry. Yeah. Well, that was a yummy, sorry. Well, that was a tasty, sorry. <laughs> Rap, rap. Ja, ja. Ja, 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 ja. I looked at your camera because you said give me. So I looked at you. Which camera do I look at? That camera or your camera? Look at that. It wasn't even scripted at all. <laughs>